All right, hi, this is uh, Mr. Philippeck, and right here, this is CJ. Hello! And this little video is a little science with CJ, and today we're going to cover uh, the topic of meiosis. What is meiosis? I'm so glad you asked. So here we go. Well, basically, meiosis uh, results in either egg cells, if it's a female, mm -hmm. or sperm cells, if it's a male. Now, which one are you? A male. Male. Oh, man, not a woman. Very nice, very nice. And so what happens is, is when sperm bashes into the egg, we get a brand new human, okay? Basically what that means is, is that, uh, you know, dad uh, with his sperm will provide 23 chromosomes and mom with their eggs, 23 chromosomes, and that's what makes you. So you're half mom, half dad, all right? And so basically, so you know, all of your, you know, your eye color, hair color, everything depends on the chromosomes found in eggs and sperm. So my hair, this, my hair color and eye color are brown. That's very nice. Uh, and so the idea here is that meiosis is what determines which chromosomes you're going to get. So we're going to talk about that here. Okay. And so remember with mitosis, you might not remember this, but they do, uh, that basically mitosis is we start with one egg here and we end up with two eggs that are completely identical. That means they're exactly the same. Mm -hmm. So no matter what skin cell you look at, so wherever your skin is, uh, it has the exact same copy of DNA. Mm -hmm. All right? Now, the other idea here is this notion of diploid. Now, di means two. Did you know that? No. All right. So di means two. And so basically what that means is that any cell that is diploid has two sets of chromosomes, one from mom, one from dad. Okay, so what is a diploid cell? Well, remember, um, diploid cell means that, you know, here is a typical cell, and then what happens here is that after chromosomes duplicate, we have identical copies. So this chromosome is the exact same as this one. And that makes sure that every new cell that you make, CJ, has mm -hmm. the exact same copy of DNA, which is basically like your recipe. That makes you you. Mm -hmm. All right. And so what we call this, the term we use is homologous pairs. Homo means the same. So basically the same chromosome. So this chromosome is just a duplicated pair of this chromosome right here. Make so, sense? Yeah. Okay. So, so they have like two um, things? Yeah, absolutely. All right. Um, now, all body cells. So arms, legs, toenails, nose or hair. diploid. Diploid, very good. Sex cells, which is eggs and sperm. Remember which one you have? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Boys have sperm, mm -hmm. uh, girls have eggs. Uh, those are the only monoploid, or sometimes we call this term haploid. Another name for sex cells is germ cells, okay? Uh, and remember, these cells only contain one copy of genetic information. Mm. So, uh, and so basically what it means is that they have half, half the number of chromosomes that are normally found mm -hmm. in a body cell. All right? Wow. And so what we call it is a haploid state. So remember, diploid means you have one from mom, one from dad. Yeah. Haploid mm -hmm. means you either have a chromosome from mom or a chromosome from dad, but we're, we're not sure which one. Okay? <laughs> All right. So, let's take a look here. We have a human here, all right? They have 46 chromosomes in every one of your cells. Wow. Okay? Yeah, pretty crazy. Now, how many pairs of chromosomes are we going to end up with? 23. Wow. Okay? And so, how many total chromosomes are in a haploid cell? 23. 23. Okay? Likewise with a cat. We're going to try this with a cat. 36. You know what's half of 36? So Is that in second grade math? Probably not. No. 18. 18. Oh. Okay. And so since there's 18 pairs of chromosomes, when that cell splits, it's only going to have 18. Okay. All right. So uh, the idea here is this slide is just kind of running us through a little bit of math with regards to, mm -hmm. um, you know, pairs of ho homologous chromosomes versus how do they compare to how many chromosomes are haploid cells. Okay. Okay. So what would happen? Though, if we didn't fertilize haploid cells, but rather we fertilize diploid cells, well, this is what would happen here. Two diploid cells would come together, 
And, and all of a sudden, we'd have way too many chromosomes, mm -hmm. right? Now, in humans, that's not really good because if we get too many chromosomes, sometimes our body acts really crazy. Yeah, and then it, and it might not hit something that's bad, and then it might kill you. Right, right. We don't want that, okay? So basically, what happens is, is that you wouldn't have 46 chromosomes. You'd have 92. Whoa. And then if you want to have kids... They have 184 chromosomes. <laughs> now, sometimes with chromosomes, more is always better. Okay. All right. Anyway, but if we fertilize haploid cells, mm -hmm. right? One so for one from mom, one, one from dad, dad, we get you. Mm -hmm. All right. And so that everybody loves everybody. And what's nice is, is it's that fine. life likes to have a continuity of chromosomes, right? So you have mm -hmm. you have 46. If uh, when you decide to have kids when you're 45, you uh, will then pass on 23. Your significant other will pass on 23, and then you'll have little CJ. Mm -hmm. All right? Now, uh, just a little birds and the bees here. Basically, eggs bash with sperm to create a zygote, which is a fertilized egg. This eventually will grow over 10 months inside mom and create mini you. How fun. Yeah, like create a newborn baby or Exactly. All right, so how do we get eggs and sperm? Well, through the process of meiosis. If you notice here, we're going to start with an original cell, okay? And then that cell divides into two. And then those cells divide again, and we end up with four. Let's see here. I think yes. I got a little pen here. We're going to end up with four cells. Each of these are genetically different from the other ones. Okay, and so the meiosis is basically a cell division that cuts the number of chromosomes in half from this original cell to a haploid state. So look at, so it's like crossed and then just splits apart so you have four in each side. Yep, absolutely, and there's two divisions. One's called meiosis one, the other one is called meiosis two. And those two, and those three are called all Roman numerals. Yes, this is a Roman numeral one, and then here we have meiosis two. Two. So next, why don't we find out a little bit about all the different stages of meiosis. All right. Okay. Well, the first one is prophase one. Now, we've already studied this in mitosis. Yeah. So basically, if you remember in prophase, uh, the chromosomes come about. Uh, the nuclear membrane here, this is the thing that surrounds the chromosomes, begins to disappear. And we get this idea of synapsis, mm -hmm. where homologous chromosomes all pair up. It's like a square dance. you got to find your partner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. How do you know how to do a square dance? Ah, don't worry. We'll cover that in another video. Ah. But the idea here is that sometimes we get crossing over where one chromosome will exchange information with another one. And that's what creates all the diversity in humans. One mommy and one daddy can have 64 million different kids. Wow. Yeah, before there's ever a repeat. And, that's crazy. And, and I have a question. Yeah, what's the question? Um, How do you know when it's like a like a mom thing and a dad thing? Well, really, in this picture, it doesn't really matter. So we can just say ah. the black is mom and the white is dad or because white is mom, black is dad. It doesn't really matter. But the idea is is that we get one from mom, one from dad, yeah. and that's what makes us. Great yes, question. like those are the two kids. Yep. Well, eventually, this is going to turn into a kid once... An egg or a sperm bashes into the other thing. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Now, in metaphase, what do you notice about this picture? What do you notice it, about this picture? So what do you notice about this picture? Notice how all the chromosomes it, are lined up where? Yeah, lined up together in a ball. In the middle. Yeah, but they're lined up in a, a special way. This right here. Okay, let me see it's if I get that pen here. It's what we call a tetrad. So it's like uh, connected together to make like us. And yeah. Yeah. And so what happens is, is that means that this pair of chromosomes are going to go that way. And this one is going to go that way. Sorry for the crazy drawing there. And so basically, they all line up what we call the equator of the cell. Well, what happens yeah. next is, is that they get torn apart. And so these chromosomes get sucked up into this new cell. These chromosomes get sucked under there. And what's real important here is that these cells at this point are haploid. Because this is maybe the chromosomes just from mom. These are the chromosomes just from dad. All right. But the idea, though, is... It's just like two uh, bubbles kept connecting together and just ripping apart so they don't, because then it will pop. Absolutely. And so in telophase, what happens is, just like in mitosis, the cell membrane all pinches in. 
Now, there's this thing called interphase. Do you think we're going to have an interphase? No. No, you're right, because there is no interphase. Because if we had interphase, we would redouble the chromosomes, and this whole process would be for nothing. Yeah. So right after t telophase yeah. 1, we immediately jump right back into prophase 2, where the chromosomes uh, line up again. But remember that these cells are haploid at this point. Wow. Okay? Which means they only have half the number of chromosomes. Even though it looks like they have the normal number, it's only half because these two chromosomes are basically the same. Wow. Okay? And now the cells are getting ready to divide again. So right after prophase, you're right, find your partner. We line up metaphase. Again, these chromosomes are going to get pulled apart by microtubules. All right? Rip. And it looks just like mitosis. And then we end up with anaphase 2, where the actual separation of the chromosomes are. And then telophase is when the, the cell membrane uh, pinches in. The nuclear membrane reappears. And then we end up with four haploid cells. Whoa. Now, each of these four cells are, gen are genetically unique, which means this will make a person, this will make a different person, this will make a different person, this will make a different person. Okay? Yeah, different person from the girl than boys. Sure. Different girl than boys. Like... Well, yeah. Well, we don't know if this is going to be a girl or a boy. It all depends on the sex cells, mm -hmm. right? Whether it's an X chromosome or a Y chromosome. Yeah. Okay? I really like this slide because yeah, this like part that. right here, this part right here, yeah. if we draw a line right down here. Like before my the soul Well, this is meiosis 1. Meiosis 1. And this is all meiosis Two. These cells right here are diploid up until this point when they split apart. Okay. These cells from here on on are haploid. And oh. again, we have uh, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase, but we just put a Roman numeral one because it's the first time it happens. Uh -huh. And then we have prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, two. Okay. And so basically meiosis is just mitosis done twice. And again, at the end, we end up with four cells that are gen genetically uh, unique. And then meaning they become each, a baby. Yes. Like this will become one baby. This could become another one. But depending on if it's eggs or sperm, uh, we'll determine whether or not it's a boy or girl, depending on the yeah. X or Y chromosome. Yeah. Okay? Well, that's okay. it for meiosis. This was Science and CJ, and thanks for watching.